Hey there plant friends, welcome back to the Plant Prince PH, your go-to channel for cactus care. Pests, bacterial, and fungal diseases are some of the problems that you might encounter when growing cacti. In this video, I'm going to share some tips on how to prevent diseases and pests in your cacti. This video is suggested by one of our plant friends, Marlon Rodriguez. Thank you so much Marlon, I hope this video will help you. Every now and then, I'll be making this kind of video. So, if you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to comment down below. Anyway, let's get started. Tip number one, always quarantine newly acquired cacti. Pests and diseases can easily be introduced into your existing collection, posing a threat to the overall health of your cactus. To ensure that you do not introduce pests and diseases, carefully check newly bought cacti and quarantine them until you are sure they are pests and disease free. You could have a dedicated space for newly bought cacti, separate from your main collection, ideally in a different greenhouse or area. They could stay there for at least 1 to 2 months, which is the average life cycle of most common insect pests. This isolation period allows you to closely monitor the health of the newly acquired cacti and ensures that any potential pests or diseases do not have the opportunity to infest and infect your existing cacti. During this quarantine period, regularly inspect the quarantine cacti for signs of pests such as discolored or damaged areas, webbing, or the presence of insects. Tip number 2. Fertilize your cactus properly. Fertilizer plays a crucial role in strengthening the cactus by providing essential and proper nutrients. A well-fertilized cactus is better equipped to produce robust cell walls, acting as a physical barrier against some pests and pathogens. Additionally, a cactus that receives an adequate supply of nutrients is generally healthier and more resilient to stressors. A less stressed plant is also more capable of defending itself against pests and diseases. It is also important to note that while fertilizing is beneficial, an excessive or imbalanced application of fertilizer can have adverse effect. Always follow the recommended amount and use fertilizer with trace elements or microelements. Do not use fertilizer with high nitrogen as this could lower resistance, increase susceptibility to diseases, and attract certain pests. Tip number 3. Proper and adequate sunlight. Proper and adequate sunlight is essential for photosynthesis, the process by which plants convert light energy into chemical energy to fuel their growth. Healthy, vigorously growing cacti are better equipped to defend themselves against pests and diseases. In addition, Adequate sunlight promotes the production of strong and rigid cell walls in cactus tissues. This structural strength acts as a physical barrier against certain pests and can reduce the likelihood of mechanical damage that might make a cactus more susceptible to diseases. Sunlight also helps to dry out excess moisture on cactus surfaces and in the soil mix, reducing humidity level and creating an environment less favorable for the growth of fungi and the development of fungal diseases. Many pests, particularly those that thrive in damp condition, are also deterred by drier environment. With this in mind, give your cactus at least 8 hours of full filtered sunlight. Tip number 4. Promote air circulation. Adequate air circulation helps prevent the development of stagnant, humid conditions that can attract pests and contribute to the spread of diseases. Good airflow in a greenhouse helps prevent the buildup of stagnant air and breeding ground for pathogens. It reduces the risk of fungal diseases by minimizing conditions favorable for their development. Moreover, good ventilation can deter certain pests that thrive in stagnant air, making it more challenging for pests like aphids, mites, and white flies to establish infestation. Tip number 5. Always use a well-draining soil mix. Well-draining soil promotes the development of a healthy root system. A healthy root system helps the cactus absorb nutrients efficiently, supports overall cactus health, and is better equipped to resist pests and diseases. A proper well-draining soil mix prevents waterlogged conditions, reducing the risk of soil-borne pathogens. Excess moisture in the soil mix can create a favorable environment and attract pests like aphids, mealybug, and scale insects. Using a clean, well-draining soil mix minimizes the risk of these pests and diseases. I usually wash the inorganic I use and sand-dry them for at least a week, 
This process helps eliminate some pathogens and weed seeds. Tip number 6. Practice good horticultural hygiene. Regularly prune dead or deceased parts of your cacti. Remove spent flowers or any other plant debris from the growing area. You can use a tweezer for the hard to reach area of your cactus. This helps reduce the risk of fungal diseases and eliminates hiding places for pests. Clean and sterilize gardening tools, pots, and container before using them. This prevents the transmission of diseases and pests from one cactus to another. Disinfect tools with a solution of bleach or rubbing alcohol. Moreover, keep the pots and growing area clean and free of weeds. Weeds can harbor pests and diseases. Tip number 7. Conduct regular inspections. Conduct regular inspection of your cacti for signs of pests and diseases. Early detection allows for prompt intervention and minimize the risk of infestation spreading. If you notice signs of pests or diseases on a particular cactus, isolate it from the rest of your collection to prevent the issue from spreading. Then treat the affected cactus immediately. Tip number 8. Use preventive pesticides. Use pesticides to help deter or eliminate pests before they become a serious problem. Insecticides are used to kill insects such as mealybugs and aphids. While fungicides target parasitic fungi and spores. Meticides on the other hand are used to eliminate mites. Remember to wear protective gear such as gloves and masks when using this pesticide. You can also opt for natural pesticides such as diatomaceous earth and neem leaves. Diatomaceous earth is effective in killing root mealybugs, ants, and roaches. When it makes direct contact with an insect's exoskeleton, it dries them out and kills them. All you have to do is to mix diatomaceous earth into the soil mix. You could also use systemic insecticide such as Starkel G. However, be mindful that systemic insecticide can be harmful to the bee population. So avoid using them when your cacti are exposed to natural pollinators like bees. Cacti can also be vulnerable to certain fungal diseases, especially if they are subjected to prolonged periods of high humidity or if the growing conditions are not ideal. To prevent and minimize the risk of fungal infection and protect the cactus from diseases like root rot, you can use systemic fungicides. I always apply fungicide during the wet season here in the Philippines. Remember, always follow instructions, which often includes guidelines and dosage. Overusing and misusing pesticide can contribute to the development of resistant in the pest population and pose a safety risk. Keep in mind also that the use of chemical substances or pesticides should be a last resort only. And there you have it, plant friends. 8 essential tips to keep your cacti healthy and pest free. Remember, prevention is key when it comes to pests and diseases. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tricks on cactus care. Until next time, happy planting!